Star Wars only, I don't know what the fuck your problem is. What's up guys, Star Wars only. We're gonna do my uh, Let's Talk Star Wars where basically I look at your guys' questions you ask me on YouTube and Instagram and I just talk about it. We talk for about an hour or two just about Star Wars and just anything we can talk about. So uh, let's get right on into it. I'm gonna look at my YouTube comments first and questions from you guys because, you know, you're my YouTube fans. This is on YouTube so I gotta show respect. So, first question is, do you think Mace Windu told Anakin to wait in the council chambers after he told him that Palpatine was a Sith because he was going to grant him the rank of master if what he said was true? Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think, I, I think it, it was quite clear, actually, that this is a thing that's been going on recently. People have been having this thought that he did it because he was going to give him the rank of master. Uh, before it, he said, you know... Anakin asks, he's like, he's like, Master, I must go with you. And he's like, no. He's like, I sense a great deal of confusion in you or something like that. And so I think, if anything, Windu really wanted him to stay in the council chambers just because for Anakin, that's a place of familiarity. You know, you want to be in a familiar place when you're uncomfortable. That's why a lot of people like being home and whatnot. And so it's a place of familiarity for him, and it would keep him calm. And also, Windu knew that, you know, if things went sour or something happened, as close as Anakin is to Palpatine, you know, he didn't want what happened to happen, basically. He was trying to prevent all that. So I think that's why he told him, just to kind of keep Anakin away because of the confusion he's got going on in him and everything. Because Windu did, really didn't trust him at the time. So, I don't know. Um, next question is, uh, your opinion on Star Wars Theory, Theory's channel and fan film. Um, I'm going to talk about, you know, what I think about a channel in a later video and my thoughts about other Star Wars channels, but i, I got to do some more research on some of them. Um, overall, I think he's a great guy, but, um, you know, I just don't like his content that comes out too much. That's just me personally. Um, his fan film, on the other hand, I'm intrigued with in the terms of he looks like a guy, or his channel at least gives the image that he's a channel and a guy who takes this stuff really seriously and is really big on the fandom aspects, the fan-pleasing stuff. And just kind of likes Star Wars in general. Like, no matter what era or whatever movie it is, he's just a big fan. And so I feel like his fan film is going to be a lot of fan pleasure. And just fanboy stuff. It's obvious about Vader. Um, it looked like he had a blue lightsaber. Or, um, my bad, a purple lightsaber. Might have been Windu's coming back. I don't know. Um, it just seems like a big fan film. And everyone's gonna. it's going to be all about the fans and everything. And just kind of fan pleasure stuff. Which is fine. But um, I'm, I'm intrigued with it. And I do want to check it out and um, review it when it comes out, because a lot of people are excited about that, and so I'm glad we as fans are getting something like that. Next question is, when the clones come back to the big screen, who do you think will voice them? Uh, we know Morrison will be their heads, but their voice could be him or Baker. Who do you think is more likely? Um, probably, probably uh, if you're saying Baker, I'm assuming you're meaning, you're meaning somebody from the Clone Wars show? I'm not sure. I would assume that Morrison wouldn't be the guy to go for because it's been so long, and I feel like they could have a good voice actor on standby, great. Um, but I honestly think the odds of clones coming back to the big screen are kind of a little slim, but that's just me, so I, I don't know. But I'm not sure who they'd cast for that, and uh, it's for me, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, who is your least st favorite Star Wars channel that loves The Last Jedi? Uh, I, I can't really think of one, honestly. Um... There's a lot of Star Wars channels that I don't like that love and hate this movie. Um, I, I really don't know. I can't give you one. Uh, there's a lot of Star Wars channels that I don't like in general. And, and it's nothing, you know, personal. I was just like, I don't really like their stuff and their opinions on things, but whatever. Um, I, yeah, I can't really give an answer on that, man. There's just so many. Um, the next question is, if you wrote The Last Jedi, how would you do it differently? Uh, that, and that's a tough one. That definitely is a tough one. I think, if anything, I would have focused on the fact that... Um, you know, there was a misunderstanding between Luke and Kylo or something like that. I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't go and ruin Luke's character. If I was going to try to have a good arc with him in terms of him struggling with the defeat and everything, I, I would, I would make it seem like for him, it's, it's like, what's the point? Maybe the Jedi do have to die. And that isn't, you know, he's giving up on his friends and the Jedi order, but you know, him just saying that, you know, the Jedi have, you know, risen to power twice and fallen both times. Maybe it's a sign by the world or something like that. If he's depressed, sure, I get it, but just, you know, him killing his family, you know, n turning his back on his friends, a lot of the stuff just simply didn't make sense in general. Um, uh, that's the arc I would try to focus on, Luke himself and what he has been doing all this time, and maybe that he's hiding from the Knights of Ren because, you know, he, he knows he can't face them or something, I don't know. But him giving up on the Jedi, his friends and everything, it just doesn't seem like Luke, and it's because it's not Luke. So... 
Yeah, I don't know. I would take out a lot of the SJW stuff and try to focus on um, not throwing the big twist in there and just kind of having a good time. Adventure is what Star Wars thrives off of, and there wasn't a lot of adventure in the Episode Eight that we saw, so I would try to change that up. But uh, that's that's a lot of what ifs. Uh, why didn't the Republic use Droid Army against the Confederacy? Uh, I don't really know. I guess it seemed uh, more convenient that you already had a clone army that just kind of came up out of nowhere and just, you know, they were basically free at the time. It was just like a gift um, from the people on Camino. I-, I would assume it would be a lot more complicated to try to, you know, reverse that or if anything, stop that or use it and then go to something else completely different like a droid army. You have to build one up and everything. And I, I feel like the Confederacy uses it because they it's its like you own the people who make the droids. So it's a lot cheaper for you than the way the Republic was probably doing it. And that's buying it from a private company or something. So, uh, rough question for me. I'm not a big guy into that. What is your favorite Star Wars YouTuber channel, not including your own? That's tough. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of a lot of them. Uh, if I had to pick, like you put a gun to my head and said you have to pick one. I, I might lean more towards Hello Greedo or a guy named Thor Skywalker. Uh, I think they both cover the stuff of Star Wars that I like talking about instead of like, what if Anakin had the high ground in Episode 3? They're more of like, why does Star Wars mean so much? And, and what, why was Snoke's character such a letdown compared to the Emperor and stuff like that? They, they talk about, for me, the philosophical stuff about Star Wars where we actually sit down and we talk about what it means and everything. I like that kind of stuff. So that's why I like those two guys a lot. I don't I don't agree with both of them on a lot of things. Uh, Hello Greedo, I've lost a lot of respect over um, the past few months on his opinions on Star Wars. But, you know, those two are by far one of my favorites. What would you like to see in Episode Nine? Something new. Something new. And, and I'm not talking, like, new as in Ryan Johnson subverting expectations. I mean something new as in, like, we, we go to, of course, planets we haven't seen before, but we meet characters that are simply just unique and that you instantly connect with. And kind of back on the whole adventure aspect, but it's not cringy and it's not mimicking everything from A New Hope. Just something that really kind of stays grounded and feels like Star Wars. I like The Force Awakens because to me, it, parts of it felt like Star Wars. And that's kind of what I want. I just want a Star Wars feel. I, I want a conclusive ending that is satisfying. Because, you know, at the end of Episode 8, it felt conclusive, but it wasn't satisfying. And I don't know why you feel conclusive in the middle of a, you know, trilogy, but... Whatever. It's it's going to be a hard one to enjoy Episode 9 for a lot of people, but I'm optimistic. Uh, I think with J.J. Abrams, we're going to get a good sci-fi action film, and it's going to be fun. And I, I think that's the main thing we're going to get from this, where it's like, there's parts where you go back and you're like, I actually had fun during this. It doesn't mean it was the best movie, and I don't agree with a lot of the steps they took, but it was just it's kind of like for some people watching the Fast and Furious movies now. You know they're not good, but you have fun watching them. I, I feel like that's kind of where episode nine's going and that's at least what i'm gonna want to see is just something that's more fun you know the prequels weren't the most fun but even that scenes with the pod racing with anakin um that that's fun for a lot of people uh oh god this one's a long one um what would you do if you were in charge of star wars uh yeah I, i'm not reading this whole thing but it's not a question that's a summary of your thesis state i don't fucking know that's just too much what would i do if i was in charge of star wars i would just slow things down focus on standalone films and that's really it um, next one is, do you think the new Clone Wars episodes are going to be different from the rest since Disney is in charge now? I assume you mean are going to be different. I would probably say no. And the reason why is because we, I talked about this when the, when, um, World Class Bullshitters came out and they were like, oh, you shouldn't be excited for new Clone Wars because it's made by Disney. Well, if you've been a Star Wars fan as long as I have and a lot, a lot of, as long as other people have, you'll remember that when episode, when season six came out for Clone Wars, it was a few months later, if not a year later, it felt like we got the unfinished stuff, like season seven. We saw a lot of the stuff on the Star Wars website where you could watch, like, you know, it was not very animated or anything, but they had all the lines, you know, made and everything. And so you can go check those out. I think they're called, like, The Lost Episodes or something like that. And you watch that, and it's exactly what's happening with the new season seven that's coming out. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I don't think they're going to be any different at all. I think they're going to be exactly the classic Clone Wars feel, and I think that's going to surprise a lot of people when it shouldn't. I I think it should be expected, and this is something that, when this comes out, credit should be given to Disney for coming out with it in Lucasfilm, but all credit really belongs to the people who made it before Disney, you know, took over, because this stuff was already, you know, basically voiced and whatnot. All they needed to do was animate it and get it finished. The story was done. The episodes were done. The scripts were, you know, completely written. So if this is great, 
you know, it, it really just shows how good the show used to be and was in, in its prime before it got canceled. So, yeah, I, I think it'll be uh, completely the same that you that you were used to growing up, and it won't be Disney-fied or anything. Uh, next question is, have you heard the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? I have, actually have read the books. <clears throat> Someone asked me, uh, do you like what you do now? In terms of YouTube, I, I, I like where I'm at. I'm in a good state. I, I like YouTube and you know the money coming from it. it it's kind of becoming more of a closer to a real job compared to just kind of a side hobby part-time job. My actual part-time job that I work on Saturdays and Sundays, I don't really like it. I'm not very fond of it. Um, going to school-wise, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm just taking my time, but... I guess I'm content with what I do now. Uh, you know, at my age, 19 years of age, I'm I'm content. You know, I'm I'm happy enough. Um, what the fuck is your problem? I assume that's off of my intro. Uh, a lot, a lot of Star Wars fans in general are kind of my problem, and they're kind of the reason I think a lot of things have gone down a drain in, ter in certain things. Uh, have you read the Darth Vader comments as, or comics? Is the next question. I read them when they came out, and then I stopped. Uh, I it lost my interest. I was kind of tired of paying, you know, like a dollar and thirty for like five pages of reading, and it's like, oh, that really didn't do much. And so, yeah, I, I'm not a big comic book fan. Some of them are very interesting, but sometimes I'm just, eh. Do you think any side characters will be put on the forefront in episode nine? No, not really, because. I don't really think there's that many side characters, because if there were, side characters for me would be people like Rose, people like Finn, or not even Finn, but people like Rose, you know, just a side character, people like Haldo, whatever, or even Leia, she's not really a main character, she's just kind of on the side. Um, the problem with episode 8 is that they spend so much time on their side characters, or each character individually, you know, they give a lot of time to Rey and Luke, and they also give a lot of time to Finn and Rose, and they also give a lot of time to Poe and Haldo, so you have like these three different stories with six different people that you're all focusing equally on and then when that's not even including kylo ren or general hux so it all kind of does cram up together and so I, I don't think there's a lot of side characters to be put on the forefront i think there's ones to be introduced to of course to sell toys and bring more character to our certain characters that we have now kind of like rose was supposed to bring out different aspects of finn um that'll happen of course but i don't think they're going to get a lot of attention if you could bring one EU storyline back to canon, what would it be? And also, who do you think should get the gaming license instead of EA? Um, oh, I, li I like I like the second question. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I like both these questions. This is really good. This is really good questions. Um, if you could bring one EU storyline back to the canon, what would it be? For me, that one I I'm gonna have to go towards the Thrawn trilogy, and the reason being is that for me, you know, I, as a guy reading it currently, I'm I'm on the third one, but you know, even reading the first two, even growing up with this stuff. Um, this might kind of screw up the way I, if I had a choice, I'd bring this back, but it might screw up episode seven, eight, and nine and the stories, you know, that we have going on right now in the real canon. Um, but I love the Thrawn trilogy. It felt like Star Wars. It was just perfect. I mean, it really was great. Thrawn was a very interesting villain, you know, so was Palpatine and Vader, of course, but Thrawn's this new calm villain. He's the only, you know, alien in the empire. It, it's just perfect. I mean, it, I think it would be very hard to adapt all three of those books into the into a movie, considering how much content is in the books and trying to capture that. And plus, with you know the timeline of our, the actors passing away and whatnot, but I think that'd be a great story to bring back. Either that or the um, Bane trilogy. Bane was really good, and that's far enough from the um, you know prequels and sequels and originals from the actual episodic films that it shouldn't affect the uh, canon too bad. And then uh, the next question that the guy asked that I liked, um, who do you think should get the gaming license instead of EA? I would say um, Bethesda. Bethesda, um, for sure. I, I think they're a great company. If I'm correct, and I believe I am, they're the guys who came out with Fallout and um, Skyrim, or the Elder Scrolls series, and I think they're both um, great franchises. I love playing both of them. Skyrim is probably my favorite game of all time. And I like stuff like that. Open world, you can... It's an adventure. I love adventure. I mean, I, I really do. I love going on adventures and whatnot. That's why I like Luke so much. Um, and I like games like that where, you know, it's just an open world. It's an adventure. You go and you create your own path. And you can see that more with Fallout, you know, the Fallout series. You really get to choose your own path if you're going to be, like, a darker kind of person or happier or what your choices are, like, who side you pick and everything. Um, and then with Skyrim, you just kind of go on a big epic quest. But you don't have a lot of choice of what your character does or does, like is if they're good or bad or not. You just kind of do whatever. There's not a lot of consequences for your actions. And so, I think if Bethesda came out with a Star Wars game, 
like Fallout, like Skyrim, I think it'd be probably the greatest Star Wars game of all time. Honest to God. Because they take their time. They take they take five years, three to five years. We haven't had an Elder Scrolls since, uh, what, 2011? That was a great year for gaming. I remember that year. That was a fun time to be alive for, for any gamer out there. So, um, yeah, I think Bethesda would be the greatest you know, greatest company to get the license for it. But that's just me. I know there's other people. A lot of people would want LucasArts to come back. I wouldn't be sad about that, but I don't know. So, next question. This is about the same guy, too, but it's a different comment. Um, how long have you been a fan of Star Wars, and do you think the prequels are better than the sequels, or do you think they both still suck? And then he says, I've always loved the prequels, and I think the sequel trilogy so far is the weakest trilogy. Um, I talked a little bit about the second part in my last video, but um, how long I've been a fan for Star Wars? Since I was probably... Three, four, maybe two. My mom told me growing up all the time I was a huge fan of Star Wars. I loved it. I was dressed up as Darth Vader, and I always got, like, Luke's lightsabers and everything. And I would always watch the original trilogy back to back to back and everything. And so I've always been a fan. It, it's just, it's literally, I don't, I can't remember a time I wasn't. And, uh, and I'm not even trying to sound corny with that, but, I mean, I have always, I remember in the first grade being a fan of Star Wars. So it's it's been forever. Um, do I think the prequels are better than the sequels? I think, uh, like I said in my last video, the prequels have two bad movies and one pretty good movie. And the one pretty good one is um, the Revenge of the Sith one, the third one. And I think episodes one and two are pretty bad. And so you have one good movie and you have two pretty bad movies. And then you go to the sequels and you have one god-awful horrible movie and one okay movie. So right now I pick the prequels because I can watch The Phantom Menace and be like, Ugh, like I'm annoyed, but it, it, there's some moments I'm okay with. When it comes to Attack of the Clones, I can't watch it all. You know, Revenge of the Sith, I can sit down and enjoy. And so, right now, I'd have to pick the prequels. Uh, do you think, and this is the next question, uh, do you think they will go back to the Skywalker Saga and make the 4 trilogy with 10, 11, and 12? Like, do you believe that they're actually ending the Skywalker Saga or they come back to it in like a decade? I think they're done with it. I don't think, I think they've written themselves into a corner with the whole, well, you know, Luke is dead, really, and that's the only guy with really a Skywalker name, because, yeah, Kylo Ren is related to him, he's his nephew, he has a solo name, he's been solo, so, technically, blood-wise, it's continuing it, but with Luke not having any offspring, I mean, who the hell are you going to come back with in 10, 11, and 12? Are you going to say that out of nowhere Luke had a kid that we didn't know about? I mean, it's, they really, if they wanted to continue it, I don't know how they would have done it, I mean, they really wrote themselves into a corner right here, while having Luke to be the only Skywalker left, and he just dies. And yes, there is Leia, but her name's Organa Solo. So it's, it's, yeah, I, it's, it's almost impossible to do 10, 11, and 12 with the Skywalker name to it. And I think that was a very foolish decision on what they did with the uh, sequels, is kill off the Skywalker name. And I'm fine, I, I, don't, I mean, in the end, I really don't care that much. I'm just saying, like, if you're trying to do an episode 10, 11, 12 with a Skywalker name, it's not gonna happen. So no, I think I think after episode nine, there, I, after episode eight, there's no more Skywalker. I think that's it. So um, next one is, what do you think of Disney ditching the Sith as a thing anymore? I mean, they have been around for thousands of years. Well, I mean, you, you can't you can't pick and choose like that, buddy. I mean, they did the same thing with the Jedi after you know thousands of years. They're just kind of like, oh, the Jedi are you know last Jedi. That's it. It's over. And so they're they're I give them props for trying to change things up. Uh, I do agree, ditching the Sith was kind of you know weird but you also have to remember in original trilogy you never heard that they were the sith you know never it's never mentioned once there's a lead scene for a new hope but in the entire original trilogy the word sith is not mentioned at all so you can enjoy star wars and arguably the best of star wars the original trilogy is without the sith you know they are evil guys but they're not called sith so i i don't think the you know ditching sith as a thing is is a big deal I think, if anything, they should focus on the Sith, though, back in the day and whatnot, and, you know, them being on core band, kind of like you had in the Old Republic, you know, game and whatnot. I, I would appreciate them going back to the original ones, but I don't know. Uh, rank all the Star Wars cartoons ever made, including Ewok and Droid cartoons. I don't know, buddy. I know Clone Wars is number one, and that's it, because I, I haven't seen all of them. Uh, why are you so thick? Um, I don't know. I'm, well, I'm not really, like, a big guy, but... Not like the skinny prick either, so I don't I don't know if you're trying to hit on me or not, but whatever. Did you, do you see the SJW propaganda or liberal agenda being pushed down fans' throats? Yes, I've made mon plenty of videos on it talking about that and saying that, you know, I'm tired of the liberal crap that comes from Disney. It's annoying. Um, so, yeah, I, I've I've known that for a while. Then, um, what's, what's the next one? 
who do you think is most likely to appear as a Force Ghost in Episode Nine? If there's one that's almost 110% confirmed, it's Luke. I mean, that that's the one that's definitely going to happen. If not Luke, definitely Yoda would be number two, and then you go to um, you go to Obi Wan, and then you go to like Luke or so, or not Luke, um, Anakin. So, but I definitely think it's going to be Luke or Yoda. It's I mean that's just who it's got to be normally. Um, next question is, do you want Episode Nine to be split into two parts? I talked about this in a previous video a few, uh, a few weeks ago. No, keep it nice, simple, two-hour film. I don't need anything too long. Just It's Star Wars film. doesn't need to be part one and two. Uh, next one is a popular one I get a lot. Uh, will you ever do a face reveal anytime soon? Probably not. I, I think it I think it should be wait. I should think it should wait till you know, 100,000 subscribers. Because at that point, this will be a legit job for me. It's, it's probably something I can literally live off of. Um, including any other job I have on the side as well. So I think that would be a good time to do it. I think right now it would kill the mystery of what I look like. Some people who have seen me on Instagram know what I look like. Uh, I'm, you know, Some people who have seen me are surprised I'm, I look the way I am, and other people aren't, I guess. I sound the way I look. I don't know. But um, I, I think I'll wait till 100K. I think for that number, it's a little more special. Uh, I think for people who've been waiting that long, who finally could see me, are going to be like, oh, wow, that's him and everything. So... Yeah, I, th I think I'll wait till that, but um, yeah, I'm probably just going to wait till 100. Nah, that's all I got to say about that. And then the uh, next one is, what is the real purpose for Star Wars, the Clone Wars returning? I think, if anything, just to kind of give the fans something to come back on and something to unite on. We've had a really rough patch for Star Wars, and I think the way they saw The Last Jedi going and the way they saw Solo kind of going, predicting that, they were like, you know what, this is already almost completely made. Um, all you have to do is go back and work on the animation and we have, you know, 12 new episodes for the Clone Wars. There's a lot of money to be made on it. I think one of the other reasons they wanted to do it is mainly because they want to promote their streaming service and then go, let's see how strong they can unite on something they really liked, like the Clone Wars. Let's bring it back and see if that brings a lot of people to our streaming service to get, to get us a little boop. And so whenever they... When, whenever we come out the live action show, the fans will like that show too and stick around for the streaming service. It's all about money. I mean, it really is. It's a business. It has to be. So I think that was the thought process is let's bring back Clone Wars, but let's bring it back with our streaming service so a lot of fans will be really excited about that. But um, props to them for doing it. I mean, I'm, I'm excited for both. Um, can't, I can't wait for you know to see the live action and see, of course, the Clone Wars. All right, so that's all the questions I got off of uh, YouTube right now. Now we'll go on to the um, ones on Instagram. How would you rank all the Star Wars movies? That's hard, buddy. It's, and I'm working on that already. I've been trying to watch them to rank them and say how I feel about them. But let me put it like this. Episode 5 is number 1. Uh, that's that's always going to be a number 1 for me. And then uh, another question right here is, what would it take in Episode 9 to redeem the new trilogy in your opinion? It would have to be a good film. It would have to be something that you know is, a, is as enjoyable as Revenge of the Sith but as good as, you know, A New Hope or even Empire. Or maybe even Return of the Jedi. Because for me, that would make the trilogy a success, in my opinion. Except for The Last Jedi being a horrible film and probably the worst Star Wars film. Which I do hate that film. But, if I have The Force Awakens, which I enjoy and I think it's an okay film. And then I get whatever comes out with Episode Nine, And I think if it's a good film, then I'll be like, alright, well, that's great. Now I like the sequel trilogy, except for the middle one. That's just the worst one I'll avoid. But I like Episode Nine. I like Episode Seven. So if that happens, I'll be great, and I think that'll redeem the trilogy. But what it's going to take in it is, like I already said earlier, some fun adventure, some Star Wars feels to it, and, and just try not to take yourself so seriously like you did in Episode Eight. You know, trying to make the the boundaries between the Jedi and, or the dark side and the light side, you know, kind of gray, where it's like, ooh, one's bad, one's good, but they're both pretty bad in their own ways. Don't try to do all that. Just make a good film. Just focus on that. Focus on making a fun, good film. But um, I don't know. I'm excited to see what comes out. Do you like Revenge of the Sith or Return of the Jedi? Um, oh, do you like more? Which one do I like more? Return of the, Return of the Jedi or Revenge of the Sith? Uh, I would have to go Return of the Jedi. I grew up loving that one. Uh, I understand why a lot of people like Revenge of the Sith. There's just a lot of bad moments in it that I don't like at all. Um, and I, I just like Luke's arc in Return of the Jedi a lot more than I like Anakin's arc. Because for me, Luke is a character I relate to more than I would Anakin. So I'd have to pick Episode 6 or Episode 3. Favorite character in the original trilogy is still Luke Skywalker. Uh, and I mean, that's one of my favorite characters, not my favorite character of all time. So, yeah, definitely Luke, uh, original trilogy, my favorite character. Second would, of course, have to be Han Solo. I mean, how do you not like Han Solo? Um, next question we have here is, what type of plot would uh, there have to be 
to salvage making a trilogy. Wait, make trilogy as whole as possible. Oh, all right. He's talking about, yeah. What kind of plot would there need to be for episode nine to make the trilogy good? The same question that everybody else has been asking. I don't know. Just something interesting, something good. Um, preferably Ray taking down the first order, I guess, or maybe her and Kylo both going out and saying that if we both die, then the Sith and the Jedi will die or whatever. Let's just end this right here and bring true balance to the force. Maybe that could happen. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, I don't, I don't know. That, that's the only way I can think of it being like a cool little twist or something, but there's countless plots that could happen here. So we'll just have to wait and find out. Another question is how the fuck do you have 170 K followers, but 15 K subs? Good question. That just happens. It, it's hard to adapt over to YouTube from Instagram. Um, Instagram is a lot easier to grow on and get really popular with. YouTube's a little different. A lot more creativeness has to go into this than Instagram. So, yeah, uh, I, I guess that's as easy as a response I can give. Do you think we might get the Quitlin Voss adventure story arc in Clone Wars Season 7? Probably not. I don't think um, there was a need for that. And I, I think with the 12 episodes we already got confirmed that are announced, I don't think any of that's going to really touch on that because that was a book. You know, that, that's... That's probably three to four episodes right there for a Clone Wars show or Clone Wars episodes and whatnot. So I, I don't think that would be a good idea um, to try to do that in the in season seven because it's a story we already know. Let's look. Let's focus on a story we don't know. So um, yeah, I don't think that should happen. I don't think it will. Next question is. What was your reaction with Darth Maul and Savage Press fought Darth Sidious? I thought that was great. I thought it was really great to see uh, two opposing sides of the dark side of the Force fighting each other and seeing how truly badass Sidious really is. I mean, that that entire sequence was just perfectly beautiful. You know, he he's, he was walking, he just chokes the Mandalorian guards like they're not shit. He walks in and he just he starts you know fucking things up. I mean, it really was awesome, and so I really enjoyed seeing that. And when I was a kid, it blew my mind. And I just, my appreciation for it as time has gone on is, is just great. I, I absolutely love and, and seeing Palpatine commit to the whole rule of two. And he's like, you've been replaced and whatnot. Now you're a rival. So I, I, I completely love that scene. I think that was great. Um, next one is, who, in your opinion, is the best clone trooper? I'd probably have to say Fives. I mean, he's stuck with it even after um, Episode 3, the whole chips and everything. I mean, he's... Probably the most loyal guy you can get. Cody was cool, but he turned his back on Obi Wan and you know did ex execute Order sixty six. So I'd have to give it to Fives. Uh, least and most favorite character. Least favorite character is probably gonna have to boil down to Rose, maybe. Yeah, Rose or Haldo. Probably, probably Haldo. Yeah, I'm probably gonna say Haldo. And my favorite character, like I've always said, is Luke. Um, would you be interested in a spinoff based solely on the Jedi's? The Jedi, you mean just you would just say Jedi, not the Jedi's, but yeah, whatever. Um, a spinoff based on them, yeah, but I wouldn't need it where I don't know a single Jedi, or I don't know any of them at all. And if I'm gonna know them, it's just like you know maybe Obi Wan when he was a kid or something like that, and I I don't know, but something different, yeah. I, I would want to after the Last Jedi, I would want to see someone defend the Jedi. It seems like the entire movies for the prequels and the sequels have been just a trash on the Jedi nonstop. And so I think it'd be interesting to have a spinoff film solely about the Jedi and kind of their philosophy. And you just basically follow a Padawan and his master learning about things and going on, you know, missions, not destroying good or evil or, or something like that. You know, they actually have to go somewhere and solve a conflict for, you know, a planet or something like that. Just something interesting that's not all episodic and it's like, oh, we got to defeat the dark side. It's just an apprentice learning with his master and going on a few missions and just kind of learning about the force so we as, we as an audience can understand it better and just have a good time. So I think that would be a good idea for a spinoff film. So, I yeah, I do think I would be interested in that. Um, next question is, what do you believe is the biggest mistake that was made when making The Last Jedi? I think when it's when being made, in a sense from a company standpoint, I, I would say the biggest mistake is giving the film to Ryan Johnson. Now, I'm not saying he shouldn't have been involved, I would have been fine if he wrote and directed it as if he had a co-director and a co-writer or something like that. I think the biggest mistake was giving Ryan Johnson, a guy with not a lot of credibility as a director yet, you know, not a lot of experience compared to some of the other directors you could have gotten. You gave him this entire film. He wrote and directed it. You didn't have anyone to co-write it, to work on the dialogue, to work on the characters, to flush out the characters and progress the story. 
You didn't have a co-writer for that. And, you know, for directing, you know, it looked beautiful. It looked great. But when it came to the writing and the plot itself, it just doesn't make sense for a lot of people. And so, you know, you look at George Lucas with episode four, he had a lot of people challenging him on it. And they were like, hey, this isn't going to work, so why don't we do it like this? Or let's not have the opening credits like this. Let's have it like this. And you look at the way George Lucas wanted episode four to the way it came out. I mean, episode four is a masterpiece. It's a great, it's a great, great film. So I think with someone challenging George Lucas, something great can come out like episode four and like the other two films where he wasn't, you know, directing, but he was co-writing and working on it with him. He has people challenge his creative ideas. That's great. And you should have had that with Ryan Johnson, someone to challenge him because it could have been a great film, but he wrote and directed it. So he only saw his vision and that's it. So yeah, I think um, that was the biggest mistake when making the last should I just, you know, letting one guy rule it all. Um, this guy asked, do you like Star Wars as a whole or just the original trilogy and not the prequels or the sequels? Um, if we're going off that standpoint, yeah. I, I, in terms of love, I really only love the original trilogy. I like some other films from the other trilogies, of course, like I've talked about already. But um, overall, my love for Star Wars is mainly within the original trilogy, within the video games, within the books that I came up with, and you know the show that I grew up with, and all that stuff. Um, but the movies are, of course, the bigger aspect of it. But you know, I fell in love with Star Wars when I was a kid, so for me, the original trilogy is going to be my favorite part because that's what I grew up watching, even though I grew up in when the prequels are coming out. So, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, yeah I'm going to have to pick the original trilogy. Uh, next one is, the uh, why are the prequel, prequels so memeable? I would say, and this is going to piss off a lot of people, it's because the writing's so comedically bad. I mean, some of the stuff they say is just god-awful and cringy. You know, we've memed, I don't like sand for years. Um, it, it's just the whole hello there in the um, episode three... Yeah, everybody uses that one, but the original hello there was from episode four. That's the first thing Obi-Wan ever said in the entire franchise was hello there. And so it's more memeable in the episode three because it's it just it felt more lighthearted when, you know, Ewan McGregor was doing his like, hello there, and everything. Just kind of all excited about the fight, you know, General Grievous. Or, so I, I think that's why it's so memeable. I think the writing's just so, uh, or the dialogue at least, just so cringy and bad sometimes and just so corny. It's easy to make memes out of, but um, that's just me. Uh, someone asked, do you think there is a Star Wars character that could beat MCU Thanos? Who? Um, yeah, I think there's a few people. I think uh, if we're going off the uh, Expanded Universe, Luke probably could. Um, Darth Sidious or Dar Darth Vitiate probably could. Um, Vitiate uses a lot of magic. Um, I'm not sure how well that stacks up against Thanos. I mean, what does Thanos have? Does he have the Infinity Gauntlet? Because if he does, then the only one I could truly think that would beat him is someone that could, you know, do crazy shit like Ben Time in reality would be a Abeloth, the mother of the uh, the son and the daughter, and then, you know, wife to the father or whatever from the ones, the Mortis arc. The mother Abeloth could probably hold her own and beat Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet, if not be close. But if he doesn't have the Infinity Gauntlet, I, I think he's free game for a lot of people. I mean, he, what's he going to do against the Force? So, yeah, I think Thanos gets wrecked by a lot of people. Um, a cartoon like... The Clone Wars, but after Return of the Jedi, uh, yeah, but see, buddy, with the well, problem with like that we're having is, well, aren't we getting that? Aren't aren't we getting, um, you know, resistance? It's it's a cartoon. It's not like the Clone Wars, but I understand what you're trying to go for. But no matter what way you spin it, you're either gonna have to pick the First Order or the Resistance, and not many people like them because they're exactly like the Rebels and the Empire. So I think a problem with that would be is. I would be even up there complaining and being like, hey, dude, this is the same crap over and over again. You did this with the um, Clone Wars. You had the Clone Wars people, uh, the you know, the clones versus the droids. And then in the next uh, show, we had the Rebels, which is the Rebels versus the Empire. And now we're getting a third show about the Resistance versus the First Order. It, it It's annoying. I don't need the same thing over and over again. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to say no to that, buddy. Uh, I don't think a Clone Wars show, anything like that, should be taking place after Return of the Jedi. I just think they should stop. Um, what is the most memorable death in your opinion? Most memorable death. Ooh, that is a tough one. I'm going to have to say Darth Vader's. I'm going to say Darth Vader's at the end of it, at the end of Return of the Jedi. So much was built up to that. Because um, even episode three, there were some deaths and whatnot, but nothing like, you know, Luke didn't die, you know, Obi-Wan didn't die, Anakin technically died and became Darth Vader, but still... None like that happened. Mace Windu died, sure, but 
in the end, I think Vader's was most memorable because there's so much that built up to his character, even in the original trilogy. And then you had the prequels with that too. You have six films and you know all about this guy. So his death is going to be the most impactful one, especially him redeeming himself to the dark, uh, from the dark side into the light side. So I think that's the most memorable death. Um, favorite scene from Empire Strikes Back. That's a tough one. There's a lot, there's a lot of good ones. Um, I'm probably going to have to say just Yoda teaching Luke. It, mo most of that stuff is just pure gold, and um, I love that. And then another question we have here is, do you have a dog? Good, sir. Yes, I have two. Uh, the next question is, would you rather have a bounty hunter movie or a bounty hunter game? Probably movie. It'd be more interesting to see that aspect of Star Wars. Focus on a different character. Get, get Boba Fett in there. I don't care. Um, just focus on a different character and a different lifestyle in Star Wars and expand on the different parts of the universe that other people go to and not just Jedi and not just Sith and whatnot. Um, that, that would be really cool. And so, yeah, I think I'd rather have a movie instead of a game. We already got a bounty hunter video game with Django Fett. It was great. I loved it, but I don't, I don't really need another one. Let, let's focus on different stuff. Um, why do so many people hate Jar Jar? He's a bad character. I mean, he's annoying. He's not funny. He's cringy. He's stupid. I mean, it's, he's not a good character at all. He's not enjoyable to watch. He, he, he annoys the shit out of you. So yeah, he, he's just not a good character. It's kind of like Rose. So that's why a lot of people don't like him. Um, next question is, do you think, um, that a new story arc is needed in the Star Wars universe? Yeah, that's what we've been saying for a while today is that we need something new. We need something fresh. Uh, we need different stories. We need a new story arc that isn't the same crap over and over again. We don't need the rebel rebellion versus the empire uh, all over again and nonstop. Let's focus on something else. Let's go somewhere different in Star Wars. And let, let's make new characters that we've never seen before. And don't introduce any character we've ever seen before. You know, let's let's keep the originals and the sequels and, you know, the prequels off by themselves. And why don't you go focus on a new score, story arc? Make the Old Republic. Reward it. I don't care. Just do something different. So, yeah. Um, I enjoyed Solo. Don't get the hate? Question mark. Uh, you know, and I, I've said before, you can enjoy it. It was an okay film. I just don't think it was a great film. And it, it like it was like when I was talking about the uh, Fast and Furious movies. They're fun, but they're not good. And that's how this film was. It, it was fun, but it wasn't that good. So, um, next question is, apart from Darth Vader, who is your favorite Star Wars villain? Well, then I want to say Darth Sidious. I thought he was a great villain. Other than that, um... I don't really consider Darth Bane a villain in the Bane trilogy. He's the protagonist, if anything. But if I had to pick, I think he'd be a great villain. Him or um, someone like uh, Darth Vitiate. He was pretty cool. Yeah, I like Darth Vitiate. Oh, man, there's so many. Malgus was a really good one. Thrawn's a great one. I mean, Thrawn's top three. Um, in the end, I, I would probably have to pick Sidious, but that's just me. Uh, do you feel optimistic about Episode Nine? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, I do. Uh, next one is, do you think Disney should stop making Star Wars films altogether? Uh, no, stop with the episodic and focus on spinoff films. Focus on, you know, solo stuff like that. I think that's something you really need to focus on a little more. And just, you know, if they're flops, whatever, they're cheap to make. If they're hits, great, more Star Wars. But something like that. Just stop with the episodic stuff and come out with a spinoff film every three to four years. And, you know, that's it. Uh, what would be the first thing you do if you became president of Lucasfilm? Uh, no, that's a tough one. I, I guess I, I honestly would probably have to call a halt to all the films and um, definitely cancel Ryan Johnson's trilogy. If I can do that in one move, that'd be great. If not, I would I would halt all the films. And if, you know, I had a second choice, it'd be cancel Ryan Johnson's trilogy. But yeah, first thing, it would be to stop making everything and just try to focus and regroup. Uh, next question is, what do you have hope the next Star Wars, uh, next Clone Wars season will bring? I just hope it brings some good moments for Star Wars fans. I hope it's something we can all enjoy. Uh, next question is, what do you think um, on Disney saying that Star Wars will be taking its time? Uh, that's a video I think I'm, I'm either going to put out before or after this. I don't know. I just recorded it before I made this video. And I, I, I said in the video that I thought it was really good. And I think it's a good idea to slow down. So that's great. Uh, this one's a not a Star Wars question. Do you like the Batman Arkham games? I played City. I played Asylum when I was young. And... Um, I didn't play Origins, it didn't look good, and I didn't play Knight because it looked predictable, and it was. But I would say they are really good games, so I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think they're bad. Um, another question is, oh god, here we go. What do you think about Trump? 
Uh, I've always said open Republican here. Um, I don't think Trump's a real Republican. Um, you know, I read a lot of books on politics. Kurt Russell, a great conservative thinker. Um, Henry Hazlitt, I have his book on uh, economics in one lesson or whatever. Um, I, I like reading about politics, but when it comes to being a Republican and a conservative, Trump is not that, and that's that's okay. Um, I just think it's annoying that Republicans are so okay with tariffs now when that's not a Republican thing. If you're going to be a Democrat, please be a Democrat. That's fine. We can debate if, you know, your views and my views. I really don't care if you disagree with me. I just want to talk about it. I mean, I, I, I really, as you can tell with Star Wars, I just like talking about this stuff. And so I just want to talk about it. And so I think that's why I'm, I'm not a big fan of Trump is because I don't think he's a really big Republican guy. He, he's making a lot of decisions I don't agree with. Um, but overall, I think in the terms of what he's doing Republican-wise is cutting taxes and stuff like that. I like that. And so I'm, I'm really okay with what he's done to the economy. I just think culture-wise, he focuses on the wrong things and just says the wrong things from time to time. So, yeah, I'm I'm glad he's president, but I'm also not a fan of him at the same time. But whatever. Uh, next question before I get all the hate. Um, that's another question. Uh, this one is, what is the best part in the original books? I don't know. I don't know what original books you're talking about, buddy, so I can't answer. Um, I already answered that one. What are your genuine thoughts on all Star Wars trilogies? We've talked about that a lot. Um, what? I don't... All right, whatever. Um, some weird questions in here that I've already talked about or can't understand. Um, what do you dislike the most in Star Wars? That's a good question. I would probably say... Um, I would probably have to say the fans. I, I I don't I don't like the fans. They annoy me a lot. I'm not saying you guys, whoever's watching this is cancer or anything. It's just the fans are so damn passionate. It just kind of it becomes hard to enjoy Star Wars sometimes because the fans, you know, you can say, you know, come out and say I like Star Wars, and they're like, oh well, that means you don't like the Last Jedi because that's not Star Wars, and it just everything's got to be a big debate and you know i don't mind talking about it and being like well, why did you like it why did you not like it here's why i thought it was bad I, what i don't like is being like well you're a fucking retard because you didn't like the prequels or you're just a fucking hater stuff like that where it's where it's like uh, i don't even like talking about star wars anymore because you guys make it so cancerous and don't want to talk about it you want to get in arguments about it there's differences so that's what i dislike the most about star wars just the fan base as a whole Next question is, are you going to make a video on Star Wars YouTubers? Uh, yeah, I know I talked about that earlier. I'm, I'm planning on making a video. It's going to take some time um, to you know fully talk about everybody, but um, that, that is coming out soon. Is Luke and Leia's kiss considered incest? Yes, that is entirely incest. Yes, they did that. No, but that does not mean it didn't happen. It's like being like, oh, well, I killed a guy. Well, I didn't know it was illegal to kill a guy because I've never read the law. And someone's like, well, that's cool, but you still killed a guy. So yeah, I, I I do consider that incest. Um, I I think in terms of planning, they didn't plan it out that they were going to be related. So I think that's a little weird. But yeah, um, I, that's incest. What about the droid attack and the Wookies? Fair question, Kiati Mundi. Have you heard of Star Wars theories fader fan film? Yeah, I heard about. It. We already talked about that. All right, well, that's it. That's all the questions we got for the day. So I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video we had here. Uh, I know the first one was pretty good. Um, both times, including this time, I've been high as shit. So, yeah, I was smoking some THC concentrate right before this, and then I um, I rolled a blunt, and I smoked that, and it, it was fucking great. So um, I'm, I'm normally pretty high on this. Uh, one thing I do want to ask you guys, and please comment below if you think it would be a good idea, is whenever weed does get legalized where I'm at, if I should do like a podcast with me and my boy or someone or even just me smoking like in it being like an actual face reveal kind of podcast, uh, I'll smoke and talk Star Wars and we'll call it like High Wars or something like that. And so we talk about Star Wars while high. Tell me if y'all think that's cool. I think that'd be really cool, but I only do it if we get to legalized down here because the law is important and you got to follow it, guys. Um, but also, yeah, um, tell me if you like these style videos that I've been doing. You know, let's talk Star Wars. Uh, First one did pretty good, about a thousand views, a uh, thousand point three at the moment, I believe, and you know, videos like that. I just like making it because I like talking to you guys. So tell me if you want more videos like these. <clears throat> I'm getting a little bit of a dry mouth now, so I'm gonna call it a day. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see y'all next time. May the force be with you. I'm Star Wars Only. If you made it this far to the very end, I want you to comment. Um, ooh, I'm trying to think of a good one to say. I want you to comment. Um, fuck. Pickle Rick. Yeah, just comment Pickle Rick if you made it this far. And like anyone's comment who says Pickle Rick, because you both made it. So, 
Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Star Wars Only. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you all next time. May the Force be with you, always.